morning. Here's what's going on at Risen Savior this week. Articles for the November activities pages are due today. Please have your connect group or board meeting dates turned into the church office. The College Age Sunday School class will be having breakfast on the first Sunday of every month during Sunday School. If you or your Connect group would like to provide breakfast, there is a sign up at the info table, and you can also see Shane sat off with questions. Today there will be a video tech training at 1 p.m. This is to train people to shoot videos for our 8 o'clock and 10.30 services. You can contact David Buckmaster with questions. Shoeboxes for Operation Christmas Child are now available in the Fellowship Hall and will be collected on November 15th to be shipped. Please consider joining us in this special outreach. If you're interested in helping to organize a Lutherans for Life chapter in Wichita, there's an informational meeting you can attend at 6.30, October 19th at St. Andrew's Lutheran Church. And don't forget, Wednesday evenings we have a lot of great activities going on, including Adult Praise Choir, which starts at 6.45 right here in the choir room. Ladies Bunko Night is October 23rd at 6.45 in the Fellowship Hall. Bring your friends, a snack to share, and a gift for the prizes. Contact Carmen Marsh if you have questions. And remember, this isn't everything going on at Risen Savior. Be sure to read your announcement pages and check social media for a full list of activities. Thanks for being here, and we'll see you next week. morning. I don't know about you guys, but every time I hear the story of a camel and going through the eye of a needle, that is exactly where my mind goes. And Arlita is gone today, and she let me pick the video, 
So when the vicar's in charge, that's what you get. <laughs> Let's rise as we worship our God. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Ever one God, world without end. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Give me understanding, and I will keep your law and obey it with all my heart. Your hands made me and formed me. Give me understanding to learn your commands. Your statutes are forever right. Give me understanding that I might live. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. And I cry, come before you, Lord, in understanding according to your word. We sing. Let us pray. Almighty God, it is so easy to focus on the temporal things of life and lose sight of eternal salvation. Help us to surrender our lives to you so that we focus on the things which have eternal value. Give us understanding and discernment so that we devote our time and energy in areas that have eternal significance. We know that when you put you first in our lives, you accomplish tremendous work in us. Give us guidance so that we are wise stewards of our time and resources. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please be seated. Our Old Testament is talking, reading is talking about money. 
or is it? Ignore the money and pay attention to what King Solomon is telling us in Ecclesiastes 5. Whoever loves money never has money enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with his income. This too is meaningless. As goods increase, so do, so do those who consume them. And what benefit are they to the owner except to feast his eyes on them? The sleep of a laborer is sweet, whether he eats little or much, but the abundance of a rich man per per permits him no sleep. I have seen a grievous evil under the sun, wealth hoarded to the harm of its owner, or wealth lost through some misfortune, so that when he has a son, there is nothing left for him. Naked a man who comes from his mother's womb, and as he comes, so he departs. He takes nothing from his labor that he can carry in his hand. This too is a grievous evil. As a man comes, so he departs, and what, he, what does he gain? Anger. Since he toils for the wind, all his days he eats in darkness with great frustration, affliction, and anger. Then I realized that it is good and proper for a man to eat and drink and to find satisfaction in his toilsome labor under the sun during the few days of his life that God has given him. For his, this is his lot. Moreover, when God gives any man wealth and possessions and enables him to enjoy them, to accept his lot and be happy in his work, this is a gift from God. He seldom reflects on the days of his life because God keeps him occupied with gladness of heart. In our epistle, Paul's letter to the Hebrews, Paul does an awesome job of dividing law and gospel. He spends most of the, the chapter condemning us, reminding us that we're nothing. But pay attention to how he finishes. Hebrews chapter 4. Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. For we also have had the gospel preached to us just as they did, but the message they heard was of no value to them because those who heard did not combine it with faith. Now we who have believed enter the rest, just as God has said, so I declared on earth an oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. And yet his work has been finished since the creation of the world. For somewhere he has spoken about the seventh day in these words. And on the seventh day, God rested from all his work. And again in the passage above, he says, they shall never enter my rest. It still remains that some will enter that rest. And those who formerly had the gospel preached to them did not go in because of their disobedience. Therefore, God again set a certain day, calling it today. When a long time later, he spoke through David as was said before. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For, everyone, for anyone who enters God's rest also rests from his own work, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will fall by following their examples of disobedience. For the word of God is li living and active, sharper than a double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, told us, let us hold firmly to his faith and we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our times of need. Our gospel this morning also talks about a rich man and money. Or does it? If it's not about money, then what is it? I don't get it. Please rise as we hear the good news of Mark chapter 10. 
As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good, Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false testimony, testimony do not defraud, honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since the day I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. At this the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus said again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. Peter said to him, we have left everything to follow you. I tell you the truth, Jesus replied, no one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in the present age namely homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields, and with them, persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. Did you catch it? In verse 21, it says, Jesus looked at him and loved him. Even in his arrogance, our arrogance, and self-righteousness, God looks on us with love. Please be seated. My worth is not in what I own, not in the strength of flesh and bone.
Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Raise your hand if you understand everything in the Bible. Riley? Bailey? You just got confirmed. You know all the majesty and mystery of the Bible, right? After three years of spending Wednesday nights with Pastor, the guides, and me, you've got it all figured out, right? No? But don't feel bad. The disciples spent three years, day in and day out, with Jesus, listening to the words of God from the very lips of God, and they still didn't get it. But our scriptures were written thousands of years ago. The writings of the apostles and prophets were inspired by God. Their words, his words, are the vehicle God uses to teach us today. And the writers wrote in their own native language. Duh. How else would who they're writing to be able to understand? Unfortunately, those languages, none of them were English. New Testament writers wrote in Greek. The Old Testament writers wrote in Hebrew and Aramaic. But one of the benefits the disciples had that we lack is the luxury of context and culture. Words or phrases that were everyday expressions in Jerusalem, Ephesus, Corinth, lack an English counterpart for us. But to be fair, our Kansas culture has words and expressions that don't translate elsewhere either. For example, one of my favorite snack foods, puppy chow. But if I lived on the East Coast, people would wonder why I was asking for food that was meant for a young dog. But if I asked for monkey munch, reindeer food, or muddy buddies, I'd get a hold of this magical snack. Another word that has a different meaning outside the state of Kansas is shocker. Non-Kansans try to think of a shocker in terms of electricity, getting shocked, or just trying to decipher what this creepy looking bale of straw, hay, wheat, whatever that thing is. But for those of you not blessed to be a proud alumnus of this fine institution or have no agricultural experience, pay attention. Prior to mechanized harvesting, workers would have to go out into the fields and cut wheat by hand and bundle it into a shock. So those that went out and cut wheat and bundled into a shock were known as shockers. So when Wichita State University was founded, it was known as Fairmont College back in 1895. And during the summertime, the students, in order to earn money for tuition, would go out in the fields and shock wheat. That's how the wheat shockers of Fairmont College are now known today as the shockers of Wichita State University. Can I get a go shocks? <laughs> I always want to do that in a sermon. <laughs> One of the expressions in our gospel doesn't translate very well for us. It's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. But I don't know about you, but I have a hard time staying focused with this gospel. My mind immediately goes to our opening video from this morning. I try to figure out the physics of Jesus, okay? Small enough pieces, enough velocity, big enough needle, could work, but that's not the point. But I still couldn't let it go. So 
So I dug a little deeper to try to find out what exactly, give you a good Lutheran question, what does this mean? One of the popular expressions is that there is a narrow mountain pass, as narrow as the eye of a needle, so narrow that a camel cannot pass through it. Okay, makes sense, that's plausible. Another explanation is that it references a gate to the city of Jerusalem. This is a caricature of it, but the large gates in Jerusalem were only opened and closed once a day. They were so large and heavy in order to keep out enemies that would try to overtake the city that it took anywhere from six to two dozen men to close it. So when it was closed for the night, Unless you were the king, you weren't get, they weren't going to open the doors for anybody. But if a traveler showed up and needed in, that's what the smaller gate was for. It's big enough for a man, but a camel fully loaded with all the stuff, all the riches that this rich man would obviously possess, it wouldn't fit. When I was looking for pictures, I found this one, which is what some archaeologists claim is a different type of gate. And I should have put a picture of somebody standing next to it for reference, but Corbin could probably fit through it. But Paul, not a chance. And just for fun, I've been reading the Quran lately, which is very interesting and Hard, pretty hard to do because it's not, I mean, you think the Bible is confusing, read that thing. But our Muslim neighbors do have this same story in the Quran, and their word for needle is sum el kite. <laughs> <laughs> Best I can do, I don't speak Arabic well. But it literally is a sewing needle or an instrument for sewing. So, okay, I'll go with that. It's a needle. Literally, figuratively, it's a small opening. Okay, I'll go with that. So the next question, is Jesus talking about a dromedary or a Bactrian camel? One hump or two? Makes a big difference in my mind. It was probably a dromedary camel because they're native to northern Africa, Middle East, up into... Western Asia. The Bactrian camel is northern China, Mongolia, up in the hills. That's why they have a lot more fur. So it's probably a dromedary camel. But I'm still missing the point. But in Aramaic, the word used for camel is gamela, which can also be translated as rope. Aha! Maybe that's what Jesus is going for, trying to get a large rope through an eye of a needle, impossible. I'm starting to figure this out, but I still don't get it. Well, the disciples thought they got it. The disciples heard Jesus tell the rich man to sell all his possessions and follow him. Peter heard that and told Jesus, we sold everything, and we're following you. What the disciples heard was Jesus say that the rich will not enter the kingdom of heaven. They'd still held on to what they had done, what their role in salvation was. Look at me, Peter said. I became poor, and I follow you. Their work saved them, or so they thought. And this is one of the many times in the Bible where I can just imagine face palm Jesus. Over and over again, Jesus tells the disciples things, and they don't get it at all. But how often do we do the same thing? We hear Jesus telling a story about something virtuous, some good work, and we think, hey, I'm doing what Jesus said. 
I'm working my way to heaven. In our arrogance, we try to imagine ways that we can fit a camel through the eye of a needle, work out this salvation thing on our own. But you ready to be really confused? This story isn't about a needle or a camel. It has nothing to do with the rich man or his money. It's about us, you and me. How do we get to heaven? God told us that millennia ago. Here are my laws. Follow them. Don't miss a single one. How are we doing on that? I'm not. We don't keep the law perfectly. But how often do we boast with the arrogance of Peter when we should have the attitude, O oh, wretched man that I am, that Paul has? We cannot, by our own merit or accomplishment, enter the kingdom of heaven. Even if we do sell all our possessions, give them to the poor, we're still filthy rags in the eyes of God. It's impossible for us to do enough. The rich man knew that. He gave up and walked away, not recognizing the gift of forgiveness and salvation that was right in front of him. He saw it as his burden. The disciples thought they were. They heard Jesus say, sell your possessions and follow him, but they weren't even close. So what is the answer? Jesus. What's impossible for man is possible for God. We can't earn our salvation. Jesus earned it for us. And that's awesome. That's the gospel. In a few minutes, we're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper. Jesus says, this is my body. This is my blood. All I see are bread and wine. How are we both right? I don't get it. But it doesn't matter. Jesus doesn't tell us that we have to understand. All he says is believe. And then just for fun, to make sure they're thoroughly confused, the last line of our gospel, Jesus makes sure the disciples and everyone else walk away scratching their heads, trying to figure out what this itinerant rabbi is talking about. The first will be last, and the last will be first. Okay, Jesus, what do you mean by that one? Back up a chapter to Mark chapter 9, Jesus is talking about, let the little children come to me, the greatest and the least in the kingdom of God. Okay, maybe he's trying to reiterate what he had just said in the last chapter. Not even close. Keep reading after this lesson into chapter 11, and as soon as Jesus is done talking, he starts heading for Jerusalem. The first was about to become the last. So that the last, that's us, could be first. The first, the only, the master of the universe, humiliated himself. He came to earth and took on human form and went to the cross. Highest, most holy, became the lowest of the low for you and for me. That's even more confounding than a camel and a needle. Why would God leave the comfort of heaven for the agony of the cross? 
how could God love me that much? But that's the beauty of faith. We don't have to understand. Just believe. The law says do. Jesus says done. He tells us, you can't get to heaven, but I can. I'm the way. Follow me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now please rise as we join together and confess the faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. from the Father and Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we make offering to our God. The video you're about to watch was from two weeks ago when our junior youth spent the weekend at the Junior High Rally in Williamsburg.
Lord's throne of grace. We lay at his feet all our triumphs, our hurts, our blessings, and everything that burdens us today. Gracious God, we come before you burdened by the pain of this life. We pray for the family of our brother, Paul Meager. The doctors couldn't cure his cancer, but you did. You called him home. Comfort his family and all of us with the assurance of the new life given to us by your son, our savior. Lord, in your mercy. Father of us all, watch over and keep all of those expecting babies. You are the creator, creating new life. Give peace, strength, and comfort as you grow your family. Remind them and us that everything is in your hands, and that's right where we want it. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Spirit, who guides and directs all our doings, give wisdom and encouragement to the leadership here at Risen Savior. As we look for the best way to gather, equip, and send, keep all our doings focused on you. Put aside our own plans, ambitions, and desires. Let everything we do be to your glory. Lord, in your mercy. God, you are the great physician. Bring healing to our family. Continue to strengthen Desmond, Steve, Mary Lou, Marilyn, and all those that need your touch. Bring healing where you will and peace and comfort along the journey. Lord, in your mercy. God of peace and Lord of all, the world gives us everything we need to take our eyes off of you. When our lives get busy and everything seems out of control, turn our hearts back to you. For it's into your hands, O oh Lord, that we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. humbly come before the throne of God, gracious, merciful Father. Put everything aside, lay it all into his hands. Let's confess our sins together, because he hears us. God of love and forgiveness, we worship you and give thanks for all that you have done for us. We confess that our ambitions in life have gotten distorted. We have not put you first on the list. We confess that many times we put our worldly priorities over yours and neglect that which has eternal value. We confess that we haven't surrendered our entire lives to you because we get so influenced by the values and lures of the world so we don't get it. We find ourselves surrounded by selfish desires and temptations on a daily basis and we cave in and commit sins for which we need forgiveness. We are guilty of not always making you the Lord of our lives. Please forgive us for allowing our own aims, desires, and understanding to get in the way. You have done what's impossible for us on our own. For the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, forgive us.
how does a God who we mock, whose face we spit in every day, still love us? I don't get it. I don't understand. But that's the beauty of God's word. Through faith alone, God doesn't see our sin. He sees his son. And it's for his sake that all of our sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One of those divine mysteries that Jesus tells us, he says, this is my body, this is my blood. He never says we have to understand, just believe. And on the very night when he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ <coughs> took bread. We had given thanks, he blessed it, and gave it to the disciples and said, take eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Welcome to the table of our Lord. Says you're my hope and say. Please rise for a dismissal. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. And as we go, we go with his blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.
raise your hand if you enjoy skeet or trap shooting. Are you any good? Well, next Saturday is shooting for the Savior down in Belle Plaine. That's for real. They don't make that up. There's teams that compete. First place gets $500 for the mission of their choice. And even if you're not very good, a team is chosen at random for $500. So see me after church if you're interested in participating in that. We're looking for one or two more people to go shoot for the Savior. And if you look in the back, everybody wave and say, hi, Lori. Hi, Lori. Lori has these wonderful devotions. Those last four or five Sundays, we've been highlighting why I love Sundays. And this book has seven short chapters to go through. Except when you get to chapter 7, there's a bookmark in there because it's not the most Lutheran chapter in the book. So read the bookmark. Don't read chapter 7 without reading the bookmark. So take one with you. If you know somebody else that could benefit from it, take one for them. Announcements are on the screens or in your great pages. And let's greet each other.